Audi delighted motoring enthusiasts around the world in 2006 when it launched its mid-engine sports car, the R8, and it's back for a second generation in two-door coupe and this two-door spider form. The R8 is mostly hand-built at a special facility in Germany and 80% of its components are aluminium to keep as much weight off as possible. It gets a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 engine in two guises standard and V10+. Now the R8 uses a 7-speed S-Tronic automatic gearbox to distribute its power through Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. This Spyder with its electrically operated fabric roof lowers in 20 seconds and at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. The R8 costs 132,020 of your British pounds. Now being mid-engines, there's no boot to it. That's actually in the front. You can release it off the key and from inside, but it's got a deep well, which gives 112 litres of capacity, and it's wider at the top, so you can take longer items, but there's more than enough there to take some weekend baggage. And to get in, you've got to find the handle tucked underneath the door ledge, and the doors are absolutely ginormous. They don't park anywhere too tight. Inside, you feel really quite special. This all feels hollowed out just for the driver. This is the optional extra flat bottom steering wheel, which costs an additional £1,500, but it's got the starter button on it, your drive select mode, uh, individual function, and the loud exhaust button. This also got an optional sports exhaust system. What is standard, however, is the 12.3-inch virtual cockpit uh, in place of the traditional instrument dials. Now, what really surprised you, you get in and think, well, where's the sat-nav system? There's nothing here. It's all very simple and neat and tidy. But Audi's integrated it into the virtual cockpit and it just works so well, it's very clever. You have the traditional MMI controls between the seats, you have the scratch pad and the four shortcut buttons and then the four controller buttons. It all works very, very well. These three protruding and floating dials control the ventilation system. Underneath that is a slide back tray with USB ports and also this model's got the optional wireless charging for your phone. There's then five toggles further below, only four of ours are connected. The gear lever for the gearbox, some stereo controls, and then the MMI system. Now this little slot here is where your key goes, but when you've got the top down and a 132,000 pound car, I wouldn't particularly want my key on display. But if you're thirsty, release the side, and there's two cup holders next to you. Back here is a small but usable compartment, which is also lockable and vital to keep your sun cream, whilst there's a glove box, which is decently sized, but some very small and narrow door bins. These sports leather seats are electrically operated and offer a good range of adjustments. Uh, there's tilt and knee support adjustment as well. However, you can also adjust the side bolsters, but that's an optional extra at £475. In the lower seating position, however, I feel really quite high, which is pretty disappointing. At just five foot nine, I would really want to be hunkered down in this, but I feel like I'm sat on it. And when the roof's up, the top of my head is brushing the roof. There's a few things that aren't included that I think should be. A driver assistance pack gives you cruise control and a rear view camera for £650. And I think that's a little bit tight in a car costing over £130,000. So there's a couple of things you need to survive in the Spider. The first is a decent pair of sunglasses or whatever you're left with. And the second is to pop that rear screen up, which acts as a wind diffuser, which is great. There's a secondary wind diffuser down there in the bonnet if you want that as well. But this does a good job with the windows up to the side. Now that 5.2 litre V10 generates 533 brake horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque. That's enough to get this from standstill to 62 miles an hour in just 3.6 seconds and it will push onto a mammoth 197 miles an hour. Now officially this will return 24.1 miles per gallon and emits 277 grams per kilometer of CO2. Now during testing we've done about 115 miles and we've only managed 14 miles to the gallon, but we have been having a lot of fun. Once you've decided which sunglasses to wear, whether you want to be bluster free, which sun cream to apply, there's another decision. Do you want to drive this like a proper sports car or do you want to chill and relax because brilliantly it'll do both 
leave the seven speed S-Tronic gearbox in drive normal mode and the drive select mode in comfort, it's really very refined. The R8 behaves itself and you can put it along quite happily. However, if you've got that little devil sat on your shoulder egging you on and you wanna go for it, then the R8 will duly oblige. Then just pop it into dynamic mode and the suspension firms up, the steering becomes heavier, the gearbox is more urgent and the engine is quicker to respond and the noise is simply biblical. So you go from a very comfortable comfort setting to dynamic, which we'll do now. A little pop from the engine. And then it makes that sort of noise. There are also firecrackers. If you want it to be, the sound is truly biblical. It's absolutely fantastic. And with that, the acceleration is mind-blowingly fast. This is a supremely impressive car, the way it turns the horizon into the now. And what's quite amazing is that power is so usable. Thanks to Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system, the grip is absolutely phenomenal. And you can really push this a lot harder than you'd expect to with so many horses coming out of those exhaust pipes. Now leave the gearbox in auto mode and gear shifts are barely noticeable. When you do want to get a move on, it actually does kick down quite quickly. However, sport mode is very, very swift and holds you in a higher gear. So you get the engine revving higher, you get that more boomy exhaust note and it's ready to react much faster. However, manual mode is simply stunning. Use the paddle shifters and gear shifts are really, really responsive. You also know very early on that this is a serious piece of kit. Going to the corner, it stays absolutely incredibly flat. Clings on harder than a toddler on the first day of nursery to his mum's leg. Very expensive optional carbon ceramic brakes do a brilliant job as well of making sure everything that goes quickly forward stops quickly as well. What I do like is the steering setup. It's not too twitchy and that goes for the ride as well. Whereas you've got that comfy ride in comfort mode, even in dynamic mode where it has firmed up, it's not back breakingly firm, which means you can push this again even harder because it's not too skittish on let's be honest, our rubbish British roads where you're bouncing all over the place. It's got enough suppleness there to really exploit all the conditions that you're faced with. The steering, which is just really well judged. It's quick to respond, it's keen to turn in, but you don't feel like you're, you're not driving like a caterham here where you're twitching all over the place all the time. Now, one thing you will notice, into a corner, accelerate out of it, and there is undersea. You can feel the whole car pushing itself outwards. So you just need to back off and wait till it's straightened to be able to do it. But when you take away all those performance headlines, this is a very easy car to jump in and drive. Put your foot on the brake, press the start, put it into drive, and away you go. Simple as that. What amazes you most about the R8 is not its ability to be biblically quick, because it is, it's not its handling prowess, and it's not the stunning looks. It's how simple it is to get in and drive as an everyday car, and it's really enjoyable to be used in that way. And with that Quattro all-wheel drive, it feels super safe as well. This is a cracking, cracking sports car. Thanks for watching. Check out the website for the full review. Do subscribe to our channel for free, and let us know what you think about the R8 Spider. Thank <laughs> you.